Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. Had a little break after the Six Nations, but I'm back to see you through to the end of this domestic season. And in this video, we're going to be looking at week 15 of the Premiership. Uh, the current state of play, it's essentially the most competitive league season we've ever seen. And as it stands, seven of the 10 teams are 1-8, lost six. And obviously, in that scenario, bonus points are incredibly important. And currently, Bath are leading that, and they're in second. Uh, and Sale, uh, all the way down in eighth, are seven bonus points worse off. So, some wins, obviously, for these teams are going to be needed. But those extra bonus points could prove really crucial when it comes to the final shakedown. Okay, let's go through these fixtures for this week, uh, one by one. Starting with, on Saturday, 3pm, we have Saracens versus Gloucester. Now, of course, Saris are coming off, uh, getting absolutely humped in Europe uh, by Bordeaux a couple of weeks ago. They really sort of fell away in that game. Owen Farrell was missing, uh, and they just didn't have it enough in them to, to really compete in that fixture. However, Owen Farrell's back fit. This is kind of now in this very much last dance scenario for this a huge team, you know, the Vunapolas are not going to be there next season. Farrell's not going to be there next season. Can they bring it together and have a charge at this Premiership? And they're playing Gloucester, who have been not abject in the league, but they just haven't got the results when sometimes the performances have warranted it. And that leaves them down in ninth and really out of contention. But what they do have is a Challenge Cup semi-final coming up where they've played really well and got the results this season. So... I mean, I haven't even looked at the Gloucester team because I don't think it's relevant. I think just think Saris are going to win this all day long, probably by quite a bit. They love to have a home semi-final. They're currently in third place, so they're going to be gunning to get that home semi-final. I just think Saracens need this so much more. I think it's going to mean so much more to them. There's an argument, maybe Gloucester, the players are you know playing for selection in that Challenge Cup semi-final and then hopefully a final. But I just think... The Saracens want will be greater. So for me, Saracens buy lots in this one. Next game at five minutes past three on Saturday is Northampton Saints versus Leicester Tigers. And for Saints, uh, they're in a Champions Cup semi-final. You know, amazing play. Top of the league in first place. And they've got a few people out with injuries this week. Callum Braley, Paul Hill, Rory Hutchinson, Sam Matavesi. Odendahl and Tom Pearson and also missing from selection this week is Courtney Laws um, and he's not mentioned anywhere on the Northampton website which I'd seen I think is quite strange you know it's clearly available for selection but not selected anywhere within the start in 23. This is potentially his last ever East Midlands derby you know assuming they don't meet in the semi-finals or final or whatever and uh, yeah he's been um, he's been rested I assume but uh, there we go. Also rested, Finn Smith, Tommy Freeman, both on the bench. And this is looking like quite a second string side for Northampton. I would have thought, you know, they're top of the league and maybe one more win would secure them a semi-final. And then maybe a win on top of that would secure a home semi-final. I thought they might have really gone for this one uh, to then be able to sort of relax, relax a little bit further down the line. But it seems like you know, the, the weight of, of the performances over the last couple of weeks to get them to this Champions uh, Cup semi-final maybe has taken its toll and they need the rest now. Tigers, on the other hand, have a week off after getting uh, thumped at Leinster. But actually, I thought Les uh, Tigers played pretty well at Leinster up to a point and then they just let themselves down a little bit. I thought they caused Leinster a huge amount of problems and they played quite a lot of rugby. For Leicester... Chesham is back. Ollie Chesham missed, uh, missing in that Leinster defeat. Uh, but George Martin is still out. But Chesham being back is huge, I think. Now, before seeing these teams, I would have said uh, that this would be Northampton's game. But now, I actually expect Tigers to probably nick a tight one here. They're desperately in need of the points. They're down in seventh. So they, they really need to start winning now if they're going to have a chance of making these semi-finals, which is still completely within their grasp. We'll see. But I think, yeah, Tigers for, Tigers in a tight one. Okay, the late game on Saturday, 5.30pm, Exeter versus 
Bath. And Chiefs are in sixth. And they got uh, smashed away in Toulouse last week after a very promising first half. And I think, actually, Rob Baxter will take quite a lot of positives from that game. You know, Toulouse are obviously absolute worldies. And some of the rugby they played in the second half against Exeter's tiring starting lineup and then very inexperienced bench was exceptional. Can they park that and bounce back? Because they picked a very similar team to last week with just a couple of changes in the pack. So we'll see. Bath are in second place, front running for a home semi-final at the moment, but they've got critical injuries to Finn Russell and Cam Redpath. And Bath have been a little bit coy about how bad these ones are, but it seems like, well, they're certainly out for this week and it could be longer as well. So this could be a real spanner in the works for Bath and their title hopes. However, they've still got a really strong looking team and the back row of Ted Hill, Sam Underhill and Alfie Barbary is about as powerful and dynamic as you'll see anywhere. So they've certainly got a chance in this game, even without their key playmakers. And interestingly, this fixture, this exact fixture was played two weeks ago when Chiefs knocked Bath out of Europe. It's going to be another tight one, I think, really close. As I said, Chiefs in sixth, Bath without their key playmaker, and it's at home for Exeter. I think they nick it. But again, I think it's going to be very, very close, this one. OK, on to Sunday. 3 p.m. Bristol versus Newcastle. Bristol Bears in fifth place in the league at the moment and on a bit of a charge. Two from two since the return uh, from the Six Nations break. They haven't had any Europe to, uh, you know, to complicate matters. And a win in this fixture would make it five league wins in a row for Bristol Bears. They've also got the most dynamic front row, I think, maybe the world's ever seen, in Genge, Ogre and Sinclair, which really suits the way they play. On to Newcastle, 10th, lost every single game this year, but they are starting to, you know, fire up a little bit. Steve Diamond has promised a win before the end of the season, and I think they may just get it. However, all their best players have basically signed for other teams now for the coming season, with Guy Pepper being the latest announced this week. Off to Bath next year. And um, <clears throat> also this week, Newcastle have actually got quite a few injuries. So there's, a, there's some potential premiership debuts lined up from players that are on the bench. In the press conference this week, Steve Diamond described Bristol Bears as the Harlem Grove Trotters of rugby, and he's not far wrong. They could cut loose in this game. I think Newcastle will get a win before the end of this season, but it's not going to be in this game. Bears by a ton, I think. I think they may really cut loose in this game. OK, and the final game, also at 3pm on Sunday, is Sale versus Harlequins. A proper clash of styles here. Sharks down in eighth. As I said, the least bonus points out of those teams uh, with the same win-loss record. Quinn's up in fourth, currently in that semi-final spot. But they've got a Champions Cup semi-final coming up. They had an enormous emotional high of winning away in Bordeaux last week. Are they going to be able to get up for this one? They've got Joe Marla and Danny Kerr returning, Kerr on the bench. But there's no Will Collier or Joe Launchbury, who I think would be key players, particularly in a game against Sale Sharks, who are renowned for being big and physical. Sharks themselves had a rest week after going out of the Challenge Cup to the Ospreys the week before, and they've got some big names back in this side. Tua Laggy, Ford, Cowan Dickey, all starting, along with the two players who are probably in the most form for them, which is Tom Roebuck and Ben Curry, who've been absolutely amazing in recent weeks. So if Sale are going to mount a challenge, I think... They have to win this game. They absolutely have to. And as I said, Quinn's coming off the back of, you know, what they had last week and what they've got coming forward. I don't see them being able to mount a sustained challenge in this game. I think Sale are going to win probably by about two scores. So there we have it. Those are my predictions. And if all of those predictions come true, then the best thing about it is that next week, the table might even look somehow more congested which just leads to an incredibly exciting end of the season to come. And some of the rugby at the moment in the Premiership is wildly amazing. So make sure you tune in, make sure you watch it, see as much as you can. And I will be doing a review show from this weekend coming up early next week. And then I'll see you all the way through to the end of this season. 
Okay, those are my thoughts, but what do you think? Any players that I've missed out that you think will be critical in their team's chances of success? Any other factors that you think will be a key role that I haven't mentioned or didn't notice or whatever? Love to hear from you in the comments down below and we'll have a friendly conversation there. Uh, so enjoy your weekend and you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next and do not forget to get out and play.